coming up on this edition of the Martinville Raceway Report. It's the season premiere. We're back. We're finally back at Martinville Raceway after, well, Mother Nature with snow, rain, uh, cold, whatever you want to call it. She decided not to let us race until late March, but, or I'm sorry, late April, but we're here. It was a great night here at Martinville Raceway. Um, it was cold. The track didn't really let a, let a lot of rubber build up on it, so it was loose all night. A few people, though, had the magic formula to get the victory lane. You want to know who? We'll just sit back and relax. We'll give you all the information on this episode of the Martinville Raceway Report. Hit it! It's my Welcome to the 2014 season premiere of the Martinville Raceway Report. It's been a great start to the season so far. We've had two events so far at the track on April 26th and May 10th. Unfortunately, we were supposed to start earlier than that, but two years in a row, the first two events of the season were washed out. So go figure. Maybe we're supposed to start later in April every year, maybe even May. Don't know yet. So it's been a great start to the season. It was a long off season for a lot of people, but it's been nice to get back out racing. There's been good uh, good cart counts at the track so far this year with both events drawing over 70 entries in the field. The SAE carts or opens are putting on a great show so far. It's like I said, it's been a great start to the Martinville Raceway season. As we begin this episode, I want to do what I've done all along is thank the sponsors of Martinville Raceway who help make sure that there's a great place to go racing two to three times a month. Those uh, sponsors at Martinville Raceway are ONI Transport, KRP Go-Kart Parts and Accessories, Burr's Tires, O'Reilly Auto Parts, Warner Racing, Chafin Racing Engines, and we always got to say a big thank you to Cure's uh, Gear Shop for letting us borrow their facility for the year-end banquet. It was a great banquet last year, and it'll be a great banquet at the end of the year, this year. Now, I have been holding on to this business card for the past six months because last time I mentioned KRP, I got them wrong, so I apologize. So, um, definitely want to thank um, everybody at KRP for uh, uh, the, all the help they are to the racers as far as um, right at the track, they miss something, they forget something at home. They're right there with the um, uh, accessories they need for the carts to get them rolling. And we'll spotlight them in a later edition of the Martinville Raceway Report. And I'm going to also mention two more sponsors that are personal sponsors to add on this year for the show. Not for Martinville, but it's actually for the show, so I'm kind of excited about that. So just uh, sit back, relax. We have a couple interviews for you. We've got recaps of the two uh, uh, racing days at Martinville. So I think you really enjoyed this episode of the Martinville Raceway Report. Well, after being rained out, washed out, wetted out, snowed out, whatever you want to call it, the first two events of the 2014 Martinville Raceway season, we're finally here. Opening day, 2014, Martinville Raceway. Right now, he just honked a horn. That's Paul, the owner of the track. He's out there preparing the track for the first on-track action of the new year. So it's going to be a great day, a great year at Martinville Raceway. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing how this new year plays out this year at Martinville Raceway. Well, the uh, carts have been on track for the first time this year at Martinville Raceway. And what we've learned so far is the track is very hard. It is very slick and it is very dusty. So it's going to be interesting to see who can make the adjustments to grab what little grip there is on the track and make their cart work with it. Now it's a, been a good turnout here today. There's about 70 um, uh, carts here for racing action. We've got 200 to win both in the 360 clone and the 360 flathead. So it's a great turnout. It's kind of chilly. You see my uh, coat on. So it's a chilly night, but it's a good night. So we'll keep you up to date as far as how things go after the heats. Who's going to win? Who's not going to win? It looks like the Opens are going to put on a great show tonight. Now, I had the opportunity to talk to several drivers after um, uh, uh, hot, after hot laps. And I talked to uh, James Crow. I talked to Kyle Watson. I talked to Brendan Goforth, my son. Easy one there. Josh Crow, Richie McIntyre, among others. And they've all said the same thing. The track is loose. So it's going to be interesting to see who can uh, get their cart to grip to, uh, the track and who's going to be fast and who's going to win tonight here at Martinville Raceway. 
Well, the heat races have been run, and what we're learning very quickly is everybody is having a hard time figuring out exactly what the track is going to give them. So as we get ready to go into the feature races, there are no clear-cut favorites. There's a lot of people who ran good in the first heat race, didn't do very well in the second heat race, and vice versa. So it's anybody's game tonight here at Martinville Raceway. It's cold having a hard time figuring out what's going on with the track, so it's going to be interesting to see who can make those final adjustments to get them to victory lane. So if you stay tuned to the Martinville Raceway Report, we'll tell you who won, and maybe we'll find out what they did to make their cart good enough to get them into victory lane. We're here with Wyatt Crow, driver of the number 23 Crow Racing Novice Cart, and we wanted to take an opportunity and talk to him about the feature race from two weeks ago Twice during the feature race, he, he had to go to the uh, tail of the field, and he still made his way back up and won the feature. So the first question for you, Wyatt, is when you went to the tail the first time, we'll talk about the first time first, the first time, were you panicked at all, or what was going through your mind as you had to make your way back up to the front? Well, I think um, I was kind of scared because there's some other perks in there, and I didn't really want to get hit or anything. My mom always gets scared after that wreck at Little Moody. So that way, um, because, and besides, when I spent, I was like, um, uh, and then I was like, oh, uh, I'm gonna spin, I'm probably gonna spin out again, and I spun out again. So, and then I went to the tail, and that was, and then I was like, oh, um, at least these are slow cards. Because I should be able to pass at least one of them. So, and we, at least third. so you, when you went to the tail the second time, you had confidence in your cart, good power, you were good all day, you know, both heat races in the feature, you drove real good. So you were confident you could at least get back up to third place. So when you got back up to third and you saw second and first in your sight, what was going through your mind? So now you were confident in your cart, you were confident in the setup. Who's the one who sets up your carts for you? Basically my dad and stuff. And that would be Josh Crow who drives in the number 20 open cart. He's the one who's responsible for the setup in the 23 novice. Now are there any sponsors that you want to uh, mention uh, before we end the interview? Well, he's got several sponsors. We're trying to find a way to make sure we uh, get them on here somehow. But we want to thank Wyatt Crow, driver of the number 23 novice uh, cart for Crow Racing. He's been racing now for a couple years. I know last year in uh, the kid cart, then he came up to novice. He did real good. And he's continuing on a successful start to a young racing career. And we look for big things in the future from Wyatt Crow. We're here with Tyler Street. He is a last minute fill-in for the number seven victory racing cart. Now, Tyler has been uh, racing mini sprints for the past year and a half, but he is no stranger to go-kart racing. He's won uh, features here at Martinville, Sandusky Speedway, Little Indy, and Great Lakes. So he's familiar with go-kart racing. He's always been really fast in the go-kart. He's been uh, driving the mini sprints. And how has uh, driving the mini sprints going? Uh, not that bad. Uh, last year, got five top fives, finished fifth in the points. Had a couple bad wrecks, but nothing that serious. Uh, this year, hopefully, do a little bit better. So, um, as I mentioned, no stranger to go karts. He had a very successful rookie year last year in the mini sprints. Mini sprints. They're expecting great things from him. But today happened to be a, an off week for him, and uh, a last minute uh, substitution for uh, my son Brendan in, in the number seven. So, coming in, hopping in the cart last minute going from driving mini sprints to go-karts. Do you have to make any adjustments to your driving style? Um, just about throttle control. Not very much different, just keep it smooth and race it hard. Now you've driven, driven here at Martinville several times. What are your impressions of the track? I mean, it's not that bad. I like it, it's smooth, it's fast, it's tight corners, which I'm used to something like that from Great Lakes. Hopefully it's a fast evening. Now, do you, uh, what do you expect out of the track? Uh, just make sure it's smooth and raceable for everyone else. 
Now, you, um, so far you've got five people in your class, so it's a, it's a, about average for the open clone class. When you have to drive through traffic, what goes through your mind? Just about keep it smooth, wait till you have time to do it, and just hopefully that you do the correct response, just like what the car will allow you. Well, this is, um, like I said, this is Tyler Street, driver of the number seven Victory Racing Car today. We thank him for his time. We uh, definitely look forward to great things here tonight. And more importantly, we look for great things for him with his racing future going forward. He's won in everything he's been in, and it's going to be exciting to watch him as he continues to move up the ladder in racing. So we thank you for your time, and we actually look forward to seeing you in Victory Lane tonight. Thank you. Welcome to round two of the 2014 Martinville Raceway season. Hot laps are finished, and in a bit of a surprise, the track seems to have a little bit more grip on it than it did two weeks ago, and the track is taking rubber very quickly. So uh, there's been a lot of drivers who have seemed to hit on their setup right out of the gate. So it'll be interesting to see if they can continue to adjust to the track. But if uh, everything stays the same, there's going to be a lot of great racing action here tonight at Martinville Raceway. Well, the heat races have been run. Final adjustments are now underway to see if they who can make the right adjustment to get them to Victor Lane tonight here at Martinville Raceway. We have favorites that have emerged from the pack as far as who are favorites to win the feature race. Josh Crow with the opens in the number 20. He looks really strong tonight. The number 24 and the 11 in the 305 clone look real strong. But keep an eye out for Austin Black, who won his second heat race. The 78 may surprise everybody and win a feature tonight. There's a lot of great action here at Martinville Raceway tonight. There's a lot of favorites, a lot of hot racing. It's been a great night so far, and we're just getting started, getting ready to start the feature races. Well, race two of the 2014 Martinville Raceway season is over, and what a great night of racing action it was. We had some surprise winners, and we also had some people who dominated their feature race. The 41 and the 360 clone, he dominated the whole race, caution free, first full field of the year, so that was a great race. In the 305 clone, the 24 Weaver performance card had the race sewn up, but with about six laps to go, he bobbled coming out of four, and then the 50 and the 11 got past him, and he was able to get back up to second place but the number 11 comes home with the win. There was a lot of great racing action tonight, a lot of great winners. In this episode sponsors uh, sponsor spotlight segment, I wanted to uh, highlight two uh, new sponsors that you'll hear about this year on the Martinville Raceway Report. The first sponsor I want to mention is Random Otaku Games. Now this is an upstart gaming company that has already released several games including one of my favorites Battle Checkers. I've had the, if you like checkers, if you like chess or if you just like a nice quick board game, Battle Checkers is the game for you. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes and it is a complete different twist on a classic game that Checkers is. Now in normal Checkers, if you uh, pass over your opponent, you automatically get to take the take their piece. Not in Battle Checkers, with the roll of the die, you have to battle for every piece that you want to take. There's different elements to the game, it's a really fun game, and we all know that rain likes to interrupt us at Martinville Raceway, so if you're, we're ever at the track and we're in a rain delay, this is a perfect rain delay game. So I urge you, go to Random Otaku Games, they have a Facebook page, they have a website, you can go to them. You can look at all the games that they've put out. They're high quality and they're fun. I've played it. I've bought it. I love it. It's a, uh, Battle Checkers is a great game. And if you buy it too, I guarantee that you'll really enjoy it. And also I want to highlight Myers Tires and Trucks. If you live in the eastern part of Cuyahoga County or the western, and, uh, I'm sorry, if you live in the western parts of Cuyahoga County and the eastern and southern parts of Lorain County, and you go anywhere else to have your car or your truck serviced other than Myers Tires and Trucks, you're going to the wrong place. Now I can tell you from personal experience, I had a sway bar that needed to be replaced on my vehicle. I called around and I called Myers. He had the lowest price, so I went in and I had, it, had my sway bar fixed. It was done fast 
and more importantly, it was done correctly the first time. At Myers Tires and Trucks, you're going to get expert service at the right price. So I, I encourage you, call Myers, Myers Tires and Trucks. Their phone number is 440-236-6390. They're located in Columbia Station, 13675 Hawk Road in Columbia Station. They have ASC certified mechanics. They do tires. They do brakes. If you've got a truck that you wanted to get big tires on or lifts on it, they can do that. Just give them a call. Ask them what they do. I, I urge you, if you're listening to this and you need to have your vehicle serviced for any reason, if you're going to call around, that's fine. But please, make one of those calls to Myers Tires and Trucks. The 2014 season is off to a great start at Martinville Raceway and we have a long way to go to, to, uh, to crown champions and have a lot more racing action this year at Martinville Raceway. Now we have coming up here very shortly on May 31st and June 1st a two-day event at Martinville Raceway with money involved. Now this is the first time in at least several years if ever there's been a two-day event at Martinville Raceway, so it should be an exciting time. Plan on coming out both days. Plan on having a great time. There's always great racing at Martinville, Race, at Martinville Raceway, so I guarantee you have a good time if you've never been there. And this, If you've never been to Martinville, this may be the time to go for that two-day event on May 31st and June 1st. Now, we have points racing all the way up until September 13th, so there's a lot more races to go if maybe you got off to a slow start in the season for your team or for your cart there's plenty of time to make it up to make those adjustments on the cart get the cart to grip the track and be able to handle the turns and go from there so it's a we're young in the season we're off to a great start but we also anticipate it being a fantastic and like everywhere like every year it seems like it's a long season but it goes by real quick so we definitely look forward to seeing you at Martinville Raceway as we end this episode of the Martinville Raceway report I want to give you a little preview of what I'm hoping to do in future episodes of this show one thing I want to continue to do is highlight the sponsors at Martinville Raceway. I definitely want to get a hold of the guys at KRP. I want to apologize for butchering their name last year when I finally did mention them. But I definitely want to get a hold of them and, spot and uh, highlight them. And just interview anybody who wants to be interviewed. I want to go around. I want to get some interviews maybe with some new racers or some people that have been there for a long time. I know I really enjoy talking to the Crow family and the McIntyre family. But I want to um, get some more people involved in the episodes and let you, you know, talk about your team, talk about your sponsors, and talk about how much you, how much fun you have at Martinville Raceway. So, um, coming up in future episodes, we'll have plenty of interviews. We'll have analysis of the races. Uh, obviously, we'll give you um, race day highlights with the um, at the track seg at at the pit report segments, and we'll just kind of um, give you a highlight of how this racing is going this year at Martinville Raceway. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next time on the Martinville Raceway Report.